I've actually worked with Carl uh, through our businesses with Dixon Clothing Group and Breakthrough for Business to help me uh, set a structure uh, in place to create systems in our business so we can offload things, so we can do things consistently. Because once you uh, can delegate, delegate a task and show people a system the way they can do it, they, they can replicate what you do. And there's not as much of a burden on your shoulders to get stuff done, so to produce the outcome that you want. All right, so to be able to offload a task or to create a process, you need to go through the process so you can explain it almost to a five-year-old is the way we think about it. You need to be so specific and so clear on what you need done and what's the outcome. All right, Carl has helped me with that and I know that he's going to be able to help you guys with it as well. So uh, if you all want to be stand upstanding and give Carl a big round of applause, that'd be much appreciated. Thanks, man. I love that I get to get a standing ovation before I've even said anything. That's awesome. Do more of that. Um, so just want to kind of get a feel for who's in the room. How many of you have a team of people who you work with? How many of you have multiple people in your business, staff, etc.? Awesome. Thank you. And how many not? How many it's just you, you're the other person in the business doing it alone? Awesome. Thank you. Great. So um, yeah, I'm Carl Taylor and today my goal is to help show you how to systemize, how to take the stuff that's in your head and turn it into a system that it's repeatable so you can give it to someone else and they can do it. How many like the sound of that, having other people doing this stuff? Awesome, thank you, yeah. Um, before I get into that, I firstly want to thank you. I want to say thank you to Stephen for inviting me back. It's great to, to be back and have a chance to present to a whole bunch of new faces and a few familiar faces. Um, but a big thank you for you guys to be here. It's a Thursday. You're all business owners, you've got things you could be doing, but you're here in this room, which tells me you're committed. You're committed to growing your business and you're committed to actually implementing, which you know, has just been shown in all those uh, amazing awards that you all received. So uh, I want to say thank you for being here. Now, uh, raise your hand, how many of you had seen me present before? How many of you in the room have seen me before? Awesome, thank you. So you guys might remember that I have two rules. How many rules? How many rules? Thank you. Two rules when I present. And the first rule is this. I might just move this a bit further forward. As long as everyone can still see it. So the first rule is this. What's it say? Was that 100% participation? <laughs> What's it say? Thank you, 100% participation. See, f I've, I've got the privilege of having two hours with you guys. I've got an hour now, and then we've got another session a bit later, the afternoon session. Mm. Um, I could stand here for two hours and just talk at you. You might take some nice, interesting notes. Uh, you might go, oh, that was good. Some of you might fall asleep, might go and check Facebook. And ultimately, Nothing's going to happen in your business. Nothing is going to change. Yeah? Studies have shown when you participate, when you get involved, your retention for learning will go up, up to 80% increase. How many came here to actually learn something? More importantly, how many came here to implement something? Yeah, thank you. So that's why I need you guys to commit to 100% participation. It's not for me, it's for you. So how many commit to 100% participation? Awesome, thank you. Perfect. So that's the first rule. Second rule is this. What's it say? Maximum energy. Maximum energy. Let's try that again. What's it say? Maximum energy. Awesome, thank you. So, how many of you have ever experienced that moment when you know, your body's in one place, but your mind's somewhere else. How many of you ever experienced this? Yeah, like, uh, to me, it's like driving the car, the drive down here from Sydney. You know, I was like, my mind's in one place, my body's in another. Um, you can continue to, uh, you, could, you could do something, like, you can not play the game and be present in this room, right? 
Or if you play the game with energy, if you're here, if you move your body differently, if you bring emotion into your body, into your language, and how you do things, it will bring you present. You can't have your mind thinking about what am I going to do for dinner and what time do I have to pick up the kids and did I answer that email? Because you're here, you're focused. And when you mix maximum energy with 100% participation, you're present, you're learning, you're, you're implementing and ultimately your business is going to go like this. Is that cool? Awesome. So how many commit to both these rules? Fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so... I've been in business now, it might not look like it, but I've been in business now for almost 15 years. Um, I started when I was 15, so I'm 29, and um, I started my very first business at age 15, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to be a, a web designer, web developer. And um, I was a one-man band. It was just me, I was a kid. I didn't know anything. And all I knew is I knew how to build websites, kind of. Uh, and started building them and selling them. Now, I was doing all of the things in the business, and I also had a casual job on the side, and I was doing my HSC at school. And ultimately, I had no systems in that business. But thankfully, when I finished high school, it was time I ch chose to leave that business, but I sold the business and moved on to another business. My next business, I bought an IT support company. So you might see a bit of a trend here. I'm a bit of a techie kind of guy. So I bought an IT support company, and this was the business that I first tried to hire staff. Interesting experience. How many of you have ever said, if only I could clone myself? Yeah, I used to say this constantly in my IT business, because I'm a techie dude. Um, and no matter what seemed to happen, no matter who I hired, I always seemed to have people who just couldn't do it quite like I could. They wouldn't think it through the same way I would. They wouldn't deliver the same level of service that I would. They wouldn't solve it where I could. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's frustrating, right? And so um, I said to my business coach at the time, I said, what do I do? How do this is really annoying. I can't be the only person in my business that can do this because we can't grow. And he said, Carl, you need systems. I thought, great, I'm a techie guy. Systems sounds really like easy and simple. Awesome, I'm going to build some systems. And then I went, hmm, how do I create systems? Where, where do I start? Can anyone relate to this? Yeah? So um, I started reading books about systems. I started using the internet as much as I could to learn about systems. I would talk to other people I knew who were in business. And surprisingly, I found that most of them did not have any systems. Um, it's funny, as a, as a young dude being in business, a lot of my friends were like 40, 50-year-olds. That's kind of who I knew, because they were the only people who could get business, who could talk on that level with me. Um, but surprisingly, most of these guys, and maybe some of you are like this, and hopefully not because you're in this room, but they'd been doing what they were doing for like 30, 40 years, and there were still no systems in their business. So anyways, uh, ultimately, we had some success, and we actually implemented some great systems in the business, so good, in fact, that in 2011, when I sold my IT support business, one of the key reasons that the competitor who bought us bought us and paid what they did is because they wanted the systems we had. They wanted to plug them into their business. They wanted some of the technology, but they also wanted a lot of the systems we had. So why am I telling you this? Well, firstly, to let you know that everything I'm about to share with you is not just something I read in a book, although some of it might be a little bit, because I read it in a book to learn it myself. But more importantly, it's about how I do it, what I do. And I'm going to try and make it as practical as possible, because I want 100% what? Thank you, 100% participation. So um, is that cool? If what I share with you is not just some theory stuff, but something you could actually just start implementing right here in the room, would that be OK? Awesome. Let's keep moving. So here's what I want you to do. You've all got, I believe, at least, hopefully you've got at least one blank sheet of paper left in your, your workbook somewhere. Um, on that work sheet of paper, what I want you to do is take your book, I want you to flip it so it's landscape mode. 
And you're going to draw, you're going to divide your piece of paper. So this is your piece of paper. Don't draw the box. This is your piece of paper. You're going to divide it into four columns with a head, headline column, um, row. Yep. Draw that up. And what I want you to do is I want you to write up here, you're going to write in the first one the word sales. You're going to write sales in the first box. In the second box, you're going to write the word marketing. Marketing. So you've got sales, you've got marketing. The next box is delivery. You're going to write the word delivery. All right, so this is marketing, this is delivery. And in the final box, you're going to write the word admin. Admin. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. And we'll get some music playing if we can. Thanks, Sally. Um, I'm going to give you 60 seconds. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about, in each of these four areas of your business, what are all the things you're currently doing? And for you one-man banners, there's probably a lot of things that you're going to be writing down. What are all the things you're currently doing under sales that you would love to get someone else to do? What are you currently doing that you... And if you've already got someone doing some of this stuff, maybe they're not doing it to your quality yet. So what are all the things that people are... Maybe you've, you've tried to pass on, but they're not seeming to get it right. I want you to write down all of the areas in sales that you, you basically need systems for. All the areas under marketing, all the areas under delivery. So delivery is like how you deliver your product or service to your customers. How do you actually give the value to your clients? And then admin is things like finance, um, invoicing, paperwork, right? Just write them all down. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Your time starts now. Go. How'd you go? How many have a lot of things on your list? Yeah? How many wish you could put even more things on the list? Anyone? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. You want to think about that. Your goal as a business owner should be to do as little as possible. Seriously. It's how you make the most progress, having other people do the work for you and so you can free yourself to be able to think because that's what really brings the bre biggest breakthroughs in your business and finances. Um, Okay, so here's what I want you to do now. You've got a whole list of the things you're currently doing. But my guess is there is a bunch of stuff that you haven't even started doing that you know you could or should be doing. Yeah? So I'm going to give you, you know, another 60 seconds for this, because I think this is important. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. And what I want you to now do is I want you to think about all the sales things, all the marketing things, all the delivery things, all the admin stuff that's not currently being done that you should be doing or you want to be doing. It might be like, you know, if you're not currently calling up customers after you've delivered to kind of check in with them, how'd it go? How was the experience? If that was something that you'd want to do, put that on the list. It might be a delivery or it might be an admin or it might be sales or marketing. You've got to choose where you're going to put it under. So I'm going to give you 60 seconds to have a bit more music and now you're going to start thinking about what are the things that you want to start doing. All the areas under these four columns that you want to start doing. Time starts now, go. Anyone get some good ideas or anything they could add to their list from something they shared? Anyone got some additions? Awesome, a few people, fantastic, thank you. So here's the thing, you've now just identified a whole bunch of areas in your business that you need some systems. How exciting is that? But you might be a little bit where I was when I was first told I needed systems and going, so how do I actually do that? That's all well and good, but how do I create a system? So before we get into the how, which we're going to in about two minutes, let's talk about why systems are so good. There's a bunch of different reasons, and I could get you to write them down or call them out, but the thing is, you innately you know why systems are so important. But let me give you the top three. Write these down. I think the biggest benefit of systems, at least for me, is you can get lower skilled staff to do it. 
which means you can save money. You can spend less on staff because if you can systemize it, then someone who doesn't have to have all the strategic knowledge can implement it. You know, I, what I do now is I have a company that offers unlimited tech and design tasks, right? From as little as 199 bucks. And the biggest question people ask me is they go, how do you do it at that price? The answer is systems. I couldn't have the staff members I have doing this stuff if I didn't have systems in place that they could just follow. Systems and training, training on how to use the systems. So um, the first one is lower skilled staff, which saves you a bunch of money. The second one is you don't have to do it anymore. I think that's probably a pretty cool reason to have systems. Once it's documented and systemized, you don't have to do it anymore. And the third is it adds value to your business. If you ever choose to sell your business, which I would highly encourage many of you to consider. Systems can be the difference between somebody walking in and buying themselves a job versus them actually buying themselves a business, which can take you from one year's profits kind of valuation to two, two and a half years profits in one go in the price point. Okay, So they're my top three. They're the two key reasons I think we should systemize. But enough about that. How do we actually do it? So, if we think about systems, there's kind of two, two areas that I think about, right? There's the, there's the bird's eye view, the kind of looking down. And then there's the, the eagle eye, close up. Eagles can go in closer. Their vision is magnified. So there's the bird's eye view where we're looking over the top, and the eagle eye is getting really close. Another way you could think about it is this is about kind of the what, and this is the how. So when you're creating your systems, you're going to need to be looking across four different quadrants and four different ways to systemize. Let's talk about the first one. The first one is this. The word is process. What's the word? Process. process. Processes. Who can tell me what a process is? Step by step? Yep. A way of doing something? Yep. What else? A checklist? Yeah, possibly. I would probably fall into a different spot. A sequence? Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Any other ideas? So a process, I like to think of it like, how many of you remember or did um, like dot the join the dot books, right? So to me, a process, did, did you ever like flip to the back of those books where the answers were there? It was like, here's how it all connects together? I used to do that all the time. And so I'd go to the back of the book and I'd see how it connects and go, and then when you come back and see all these dots, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I could start here and then I go here and then I go there. That's exactly what a process is. I like to think of it as it's the dot, the dot, join the dots of all these different things in your business. Start here, here's what's next, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. Here's how they all need to be connected together. Okay? So, I'm not going to go much deeper on it right now because in my next session, we're going to go practical on processes. But I want you to be aware of them. Okay, so it's about joining the dots of how it all connects together. The next type of thing is a policy. What's the word? A policy. Who can tell me what a policy is? What do you think a policy is? A way something has to be done? Yep, thank you. Rules, yep. What else? Something you enforce. Yeah. So here's what I think. Here's how I think of it. A policy to me 
is something that revolves around decisions. If somebody needs to be able to make a decision about something, how do, when this happens, what do we do? That, to me, is when a policy is needed. So, for example, in, in my business, right, we, we're offering these tasks, unlimited tasks, but not everything can be a task, right? We have a limitation on what a task is. And most of the time, my team would constantly come back to me and go, Carl, clients asked us to do this. Is that a task? And then, you know, a week later or a couple of days later, even an hour later, oh, Carl, this client's asked us to do this. Is that a task? And it was really frustrating because it was interrupting what I needed to do. And so it became very clear that we need to create a policy of what is a task, something that can be shared to clients but can also be used internally. And so now we have a clear policy. It's like nothing over three hours, maximum three hour time limit that you can spend on it to be a task. Uh, also, it has to be on one of our supported platform lists. So if someone asks for us to do something in, say, Salesforce, which we don't support, sorry, it's not, not included. Right? Um, and it's also got to be something that's not, it, not on our not a task list. So we have another resource that is, here's what's not a task. So now the staff don't need to come and ask me. They need to kind of firstly go, is it on the supported platform list? Yes or no. Is it on the not a task list? Yes or no. Will I, can I do it within three hours? Yes or no. Great, it's a task. Does this make sense? They now have a resource as a policy that is company-wide. It's not open to interpretation, it's here's what it is. They are able to make the decision themselves because they just reflect straight back to the policy. So here's what I want you to do. On your tables, I want you to brainstorm what are all the key areas in business, in your particular businesses, where decisions are made. Where they, what are the decision points in your business? What are the parts where people come to? Whether it's you, sometimes policies you know, for those of you who are just, you're just the only person in your business right now, you might be going, why do I need a policy? Because it gives you something to come back to and go, yep, it's in policy, it's written down. And you can tell the customer, sorry, it's our policy. See, it's on paper. Okay, so what are all the decision points in your business? Internally, customer related, what are the decision points that ne may need a policy? Okay, as a, as a table, brainstorm, come up with as much as you can. Uh, can get some music, please? I'll tell you when to stop. Go. Okay, about 10 more seconds, guys, finishing up. Three, two, one, and pause. Pause, thanks, guys. So I want to know, what did you come up with? Let's create a bit of a list. What are some decision points inside your business? Where are the points where policies may be required? Shout them out. Was that leave? Yeah. Leave. When are they allowed to take leave? How is it approved, etc.? Yeah, perfect. Was that privacy? Yeah. Privacy policy, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Confidentiality. Well, they can be different because, you know, you might have a privacy policy for clients, but then you have a non-disclosure or, or agreement with your staff and different things as well. So, absolutely. Confidentiality. What else? What was that? Refunds. refunds, yeah. When is a refund given and when is it not? What are those policies? Yes, what else? Cancellations and bookings. Perfect. I heard another one, what was that? Payment terms, yeah, absolutely. What are the, what are the ways you accept money? You know, do you accept checks? If not, do you have a policy that, sorry, we don't take checks, you know? Warranties, absolutely. What else? Turnaround times, totally. Anyone have anything about like hiring and firing? What about that? What's your policy on when to hire and when to fire? Yeah, what else we got? Customer selection. So a policy of who is the type of clients we won't work with it might be easier to say, here's what we won't work with than here's who we will, but it, it, whatever you, a will and a won't. I love that, absolutely. So it's like clients, it's our client policy. Um, a friend of mine calls it the no dickhead policy, basically. <laughs> I think it's great, it's like, absolutely. I, I, I've told, I told my team that, I said, guys, if you're ever treated like badly, 
we have a no dickhead policy, so just tell me straight away and we'll get rid of them. We'll just tell them, sorry, we're not the right fit for you. We'll cancel their subscription and it's, it's fine. So, but having that policy so staff know that that exists, do you think that's empowering for them? Yeah, to know that we're interested in their best interests, that we're not telling them they have to put up with crap? Perfect. What else? Yes. What was that? Advice policies. Advice policies. Tell me a bit more about that. Are you like a financial advisor? Is that why? Yeah. <laughs> what you can and can't say. Yeah, here's what you can say, here's what you can't say. Absolutely. It's all about the things that people would typically come to you or somebody in your business going, I don't know what to do, what should I do here? And you can just go, refer to the policy. And eventually you'll get them to the point where they don't even come to you anymore, they just go straight to the policy. All right? How much time do you think that could potentially save you every day? Yeah? A lot. A lot. So how many are going to go, go and implement some policies? Only like seven of you? Seriously? Do you already have heaps of policies in your business already? Awesome. That's great. When does it start and finish of the policies? So tell me a bit more about that. The question was, when is the confusion? Set in. You, too, you mean in terms of if there's too many policies? Yeah, well, I mean, once you start, sometimes you just keep going. You can, like you said earlier, you feel like you want to clone yourself. Uh, you just feel like it can't be done as good as you'd like to be done all the time. So, what if you start with one thing? I guess you can start with one and eventually you scrub that one because it should be common knowledge. But then you get the new person in again, you've got to start. You've got to have it there, but it just grows and grows and yeah, so, so it sounds like for the recording, you know, the question really is, you know, where do you start? And, and he, he made a, a comment there of, well, do you start it? And then eventually when it's com common knowledge, you just scrub it and, and get rid of it. Otherwise, you just build up a whole bunch of policies. Yeah, absolutely. You build up a whole bunch of policies. I would not get rid of it because, as you say, when you hire another staff member, it's not common knowledge to them. I, one of the things I love about technology and tools like Entreport and stuff, right, and, 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 and software is because... I truly believe that machines work. When a machine screws up, it's a person's fault. The coder screwed up, the person who entered the data screwed up, somebody, a person, screwed up. The computer did what it was supposed to do. So for me, you know, I, I want to have it as anything automated as much as possible. I don't want to rely on, and where I'm going with that, this is, if it became common knowledge and you go, oh, well, the staff will just train it, I don't want to rely on a person remembering that they need to tell them to do that. I want to go, follow the steps. Tell them about this. Or you don't know what to do, refer to the policy. And we'll talk about where do you store this so that when there's that many, how do people find it? I would not be storing it as pieces of paper. The days of having an actual policies and procedures manual that's physical is... He, write this down. A key thing about a system. A system that is not followed is worthless. Having a system in a document that no one knows is there or ever looks at is a complete waste of your time, waste of, just an absolute waste. It doesn't work. So you need to get buy-in from your staff. You need to find out what are they going to look at? Where are they going to be? What makes it easy for them to access? Because if they're not prepared to follow the system, if you've mapped out this amazing system and none of your staff will follow it or they're skipping one step, then you need to look at how do we change the system? Not how do you change the staff, how do we change the system so that they'll do it? Because it is stupid if they just go, oh, well, that's, this is how we're supposed to do it, but here's how we'll do it. And I know that that happens, because I remember when I worked, I used to work at Hoyt's, right, um, as a casual job. And half the time it was like, here's the spot proper policies we're supposed to do, but here's how we actually all do it. That's how the training was done. That's a broken system. Yeah? If that's happening, you have broken systems. But great, great, um, great question. So... I want you to pick one of all the things you kind of wrote down and think about in your business. And if you've already got a whole bunch of policies and you don't feel there's an extra one to add, cool. But I want you to pick one. What is one policy that you're going to implement after this event? What are you going to go into your business? What is the very first policy that you're going to put in place? Okay? Take 10 seconds. Think about it. Don't think about it too hard. Just literally the first one that you kind of go, oh, maybe that one. That's the one. That's the one you're going to do.
And if you're not sure, think about what's the question people ask you the most about. For me, it was that, what's a task? Oh, we need to get a policy. I, I can't keep answering this question over and over again. Okay? Made that decision. We good? Everyone made the decision of what policy they're going to implement? I'm not seeing many hands go up. How many have got the thing? How many not? All right, I see a few hands not going up. Anyone not made a decision? No? Okay, so we've all got a policy. Great. Let's go back to a drawing. So the processes and policies all about having your bird's eye view. This is that high level. This is the I this is about knowing what they need to do. It's not about how, it's about what. What do we do here? When this happens, what do I do? What do I do next? Process is about kind of here's where I am, what do I do next? Policy is about I've got to this point, what do I do? Is that clear? So let's talk about the how. How do we actually show these people how to do it? Um, so what we need to have, uh, and I know I've spelt it wrong, I always do, there's one less E, I think, but it's a procedure. What is it? You need procedures. Procedures. And so how many of you have those documented procedures in your business already? Whether they're being used or not, you've got documented procedures? Awesome, thank you. Um, as I said before, if it's not being used, it's completely worthless. So. Store it somewhere that's easy, uh, it's searchable. So for me personally, I use a combination of Google Sites, right, because I use Google Apps to run my business. So we use Google Sites, which is like this, um, like a bit of a basic web kind of structure, and that's where I store a whole bunch of procedures in there. And it's got a search capability, they can just type in, let's say they're searching how to do something in Entreport, they type in Entreport, and it's going to bring up all the procedures we have related to Entreport. Right. Uh, I also utilize a uh, WordPress site that is locked off, it's not for the general public use, it's only for the internal staff, and that's where we use all our training. So there are procedures in there, but that's more, uh, the way I do my business is my client, my staff go through a accreditation of each platform that we support. We have a whole in-depth training, and that's stored in the WordPress site. So the key reasons that, one, they're online, because I need them to be accessible from anywhere. Two, it needs to be searchable. They need to be able to just put in a simple keyword. They don't need to know specifically what they're looking for. They need to kind of be like, for, for a policy, they're like, refunds. And when they type in refunds, it'll be like, here's the policy, refund policy, and here's how to process the refund as a, as a procedure. So they can quickly read the policy. Cool. All right, I now need to use my process to actually process the, sorry, the procedure to actually run the refund. Does that make sense? So make sure you're storing it somewhere. Um, there's a bunch of other tools out there. There's things like Screen Steps, um, which allows you to create you know, systems. Um, there's another one called Sweet Process. Um, there's a bunch of different online. If you search how do you do system, like procedure kind of online, you'll find a bunch of tools you can use. Uh, Google Sites is free or part of your Google Apps account, anyway. So here's what I want to do with the procedure. Let's actually build a procedure right now. So who has a procedure in your business that you would like to actually create? Who has something in your business you would like to create a procedure for? And we'll do it as a whole group. We'll build out a basic version of this procedure. Shout it out to me. Pricing. So tell me about this pricing procedure. What do you, what do you mean? So instead of a pricing policy, what's the, give me some context. Um, a procedure where um, you would ask them, how many transactions they would be doing, you know, just like do we need to be on how big their so is. Kind of quoted, is yes. that what you mean? Like a quoting yes. procedure? Perfect. Great. Okay, so here's how you create, or here's how I create systems. I ask myself questions. And the way it's laid out on the document is it starts with this. What are we doing? First question, what are we doing? And so what are we doing? Well, we're creating where we are. Um, providing a quote to a prospect. Providing a quote to a prospect. So you sit down and you go, okay, what are, what are we doing? We're providing a quote to a prospect. Perfect. So, next question is, why? Why are we doing this? One of the biggest things I learned when it came to training staff and building systems, if they don't have the context 
if they just have the here's what to do and they don't have the context of why we're doing it, how does it fit into the bigger thing, why, you get less buy-in and half the time you get a really crappy result, especially in what we do. Um, if they don't get the bigger picture, they just don't really understand. They're like, oh, we do this. It's like, well, why do we do it? I don't know, we just because the procedure says to. Yeah, so it's really important, really important to make sure that you have a, a, a good reason why, to explain to them, explain how the business works. Why do we do this? Well, because it makes us more money or it helps them decide whether they want to work. Like, what is the reason why they are following this procedure? So providing a quote to a prospect, what's the reason why? Um, so that there's a, a level playing field and you've got more control over your cash flow and all that sort of stuff. So, so uh, it, that's for the business. It's so that... So is it what it basically will a customer never not sign up to you? So what's your business? Maybe this will help me. You're a bookkeeper. Great. So they need they won't do business with you unless they know the price, right? So why are we providing a quote? Well, because uh, we want to show so it might be show value and help make decision. We want to be able to show our value in the quoting process. I'm just kind of projecting there. That's for me. If I was creating a quote, I wouldn't want it to just be, here's the price. It should demonstrate the value as well. And then wh why are we doing it? To help help the, the client make the decision as to whether we're the right fit for them. Yeah? Is this making sense so far? Is this helpful? Awesome. So what are we doing? Why are we doing it? The next question is, who? Who does this? And not the name of the person, but what's the name of the role? Who does this? The salesperson? Perfect. So the salesperson. Why do you think it's important for the, when they're looking at a procedure to know who should do, who does this? Whether it's relevant to them, whether if they, they're looking at this and they're about to do it and that, they're not a salesperson, do you think that might make them go, oh, maybe I should talk to someone before I just go and do this? Because if, if someone wasn't a salesperson possibly providing a quote, could that potentially damage you, your business? So it's an extra check to kind of go, hey, are you this person? Or if you're someone else, who, if, if you're letting the other staff see all the different roles, it's kind of go, hey, look, this person does this, and they might start to go, oh, I want to be that person. I want to do that stuff. That's who I need to be in the business to do it. Yeah? So they're the simple ones. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? And who does it? And that's what I literally have at the top of all my systems. It's what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Who does this? The next one is how? What are the steps? What is the step-by-step -step that they do? What are the actions they take? Now, when it comes to the how, there's a bunch of different ways you can provide, you can create systems. If it's something you do on a computer, I highly recommend that you just grab a tool called, um, I use Screencast-O-Matic. Basically, it allows you to record the computer screen. How many of you, oh, have you ever talked about Jing or things like that? So right, there's tools out there, Jing, uh, Snagit, I use Screencast-O-Matic. There's a bunch of different tools you can use. Record your computer screen and it, you know, talk at it and show what to do. screencast, and then there's like a hyphen, O hyphen, Matic. Uh, it's free, and then if you want to buy the, the paid version that gives you some extra features and stuff, it's like 15 bucks a year. It's ridiculously cheap. And it's, I had, the reason I got it is I used to use Jing and Snagit and stuff, and I had problems on my computer, and I found this other one that I don't have problems with, and it's cheaper, so um, I love it. So screencast matter. anything you're doing on a computer, all the ad mini type stuff, all that things, or if you're like me and you do things on computers, all your training should be videos. And then underneath the video, especially if it's a long video, if it's like a five minute video, two, two to five minute video, they can watch the video again. If we're talking hour long, breakdown of how to do this, give them the video. But let me ask you this, if you were trying to do something and you had to sit through an hour long video to do it, when you've if you've watched the video once, would you bother to watch the video again? So what do you really need? You just need kind of bullets, just to kind of, ah, oh, I remember, that's what I need to do next. If you just give them the video, they'll then rely on this, and they'll probably skip a step, 
and that's the problem. You've got to make it easy for everyone to use. As I said, a system not followed is a system that's broken. So I watched the video the first time, now I've got the context and I get it. Next time I'm going to do it, I just need to follow my bullet points. Right? So you're going to have, you're going to use things like video. You're going to have bullets. Do this, then do this. Yeah? One, two, three. Click here. Use uh, pictures. So you can take photos. You can create screenshots. So on a computer, you can create like a, a photo of what the button to click on. In my IT business, we went to the level of, is there like a, basically when we had like our closing, how to close up the shop you know, for the end of the day, there, let's pretend there was a light switch here. We had a photo of the 